What's happening my block buddies? Welcome back to Blocked Content. Today, we have exciting news about something called Pokemon Stars. Now, what is this? Well, you know Pokemon Sun and Moon? There's always like this third game in the series that's like, you know, red, blue, and yellow, gold, silver, and crystal. And now, I think we might be getting Pokemon Stars. And this is a big revelation because having Pokemon Stars, that is one thing, right? But when this leak kind of came out, they didn't just say, hey, so it's Pokemon Stars and it's coming to the 3DS and it's going to be this new game. No, what the leak actually ends up being is this. Pokemon Stars is actually coming to the Nintendo Switch. Okay, that is just insane to me. And the whole promise of an idea of a mainline Pokemon game on a console is insane and very awesome and you know makes me smile from ear to ear already but if you think about it it's also the first time that it is both on a console but actually on a handheld as well because you can take it with you right so you know i always thought the game freak the pokemon company they made these games they made these pokemon games on a handheld because that's the exploring part of Pokemon, right? You go out into the world and you catch Pokemon and having it on a handheld, you know, encapsulates that feeling of, you know, going out there and catching Pokemon and, you know, being out there in the wild. And now they don't really have an excuse to not put it on the console because the console is actually, you know, being able to go outside and to have these adventures and to, you know, have this Pokemon Go experience, but in a much larger and bigger and more meaningful way. And that is exciting to me. So what I ended up doing is I searched and searched around for more info about Pokemon Stars all over the place. Because you know, you block content fans, you need the best, you will get the best, and I will search for it. And so I got to ScreenRant.com. It's a website that I very much respect. They also have a lot of news about TV shows and movies, which I absolutely love because I'm so into the whole CW Arrow universe and they report on that as well. But I got the screen rant because they, they made a new article and this article was actually written by John Castile and it actually says what those rumors about Pokemon stars could mean for the Nintendo Switch. All right, so this got me interested, right? Because Pokemon stars, Nintendo Switch, all right, we know this, but what it could mean, what it could mean for the console itself. So let's talk about this a little bit. I thought that it would be very cool to just have a different riff on this article, right? Because I don't necessarily agree with everything that's in here. So I thought it would be cool to have sort of a dialogue, to start a dialogue. So re let's read through this article. So it says, before Nintendo officially unveiled its next console product, the Nintendo Switch, Rumors and speculation ran rampant as to exactly what the mysterious Project NX would actually be. Now that we've gotten our first, and thus far only, official look at the Switch, rumors and speculation are still running rampant. With Nintendo refusing to divulge any more details about the handheld slash console hybrid device until the beginning of next year, fans are left with nothing but third-party comments and rumors to fill the void. One of the biggest rumors of recent revolves around a game called Pokemon Stars, a third entry in the Pokemon generation that started with Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon. The game will reportedly debut on the Switch sometime next year instead of a 3DS or 2DS where the first two games, of course, released. This would be the first time that Nintendo has released a real read game that's part of the main franchise Pokemon game on a home console, even if the hybrid nature of the Switch kind of blurs that line a little bit. If the rumor turns out to be true, then it also might shed some light on Nintendo's larger plans for its new product. And then they say switching things up. Alright, let's read on. A lot of people aren't quite sure what to make of the Switch. And not just because Nintendo's only given us around 3 minutes of commercial footage to go on. Game consoles are traditionally released in the fall, ideally to major acclaim and must-buy status during the holiday shopping season. The PS4 Pro just came out, Project Scorpio is slated to drop next fall, and the next Xbox and PlayStation consoles will also likely enjoy a fall release. Even Nintendo's consoles are typically fall releases because that's how the console game is played. For the Switch though, 
the release date comes sometime in March. And yes, Screen Rant, I also thought this was pretty weird. A March release is what we want because it's close and it makes sense. And that's probably when everything is done. But is it smart from Nintendo, right? They couldn't release it now because it's just not ready. I get that. They can't release it, you know, next month in December. I get it. It's not ready. Um, and I know that the fans, you can't make them wait longer until next December. But yeah, still, how is a March release going to do? Well, we read on at ScreenRant.com. Nintendo reportedly set the March date to ensure that the Switch will have a strong launch lineup, which isn't a bad reason, given how horrible the game variety at launch has been for some recent consoles. And of course, they mean the Wii U, and I think the Wii had a pretty weak launch as well. They did have The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, but that was not really a new game. If you believe the rumors, this means that we'll see a new Mario game at launch and several Wii U ports. It's possible that we'll get some near-launch third-party titles as well, though nothing's been officially announced. This could work out to be a decent launch lineup, even if it's largely made up out of ports. So I think they're probably talking about the Mario Kart game and about Splatoon, right? Maybe some sports games as well from third parties, but definitely those are two, the two big ones. I really hope that the Mario Kart game is a new game in the franchise, but you know, that was a discussion for a different video. Anyway, but given the low sales that plagued the Wii U, exposing some of its all-star games to a potentially larger audience isn't necessarily a bad thing. And I agree with you guys, because I do think that there are so many great Wii U games that nobody's ever played. And I am actually one of those guys, because there are some games that I've just never ever touched. Like Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, for example. I have never played that game and I really wanted to, but there was such a draw and I never got to it. And if the marketing would have been better, if the console would thrive a bit more, then a lot of people would have played a lot more games. That March release still stands out as odd though. Even if there will be some decent games to play right off the bat, some claim that it's, it's, it's sort of a sign that Nintendo is horribly out of touch or that it's the company trying to launch in between the latest PS4 and Xbox One models since it can't compete with them head to head. There may be a bit more strategy at work than it first appears here though, especially if Pokemon Stars is a real Switch release. So looking beyond March, right? So far the March release of the Switch is what stands out most to people. Some of the rumored launch titles are good games, but as ports, they aren't that much to get excited about. And now they mention actually The Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild. It was long thought to be a launch title, but the game's been pushed back to sometime later in the year, which I totally think sucks, right? Because we thought Breath of the Wild would for sure be a shoe in and it just isn't. It's very weird. Other rumored launch titles may wind up being nothing more than rumors, since there's been no supporting evidence ever since the rumors first broke. If Nintendo was launching the Switch with the current rumored lineup during the holiday season, it would look pretty sparse indeed, but a March release gives the company plenty of time to ramp things up before the holidays get here. And I agree with them, you know, it might look a little bit sparse, but having that March release is a, a certainly like a different market place that they've ever been in, right? And doing it in March also has the advantage of people, you know, having just the Wii, the, just the new Switch to, to think about and to buy, right? There's no other options at that time that just came out. If we assume that Pokemon Stars is really coming to the Switch, then we have two non-launch titles coming sometime in 2017 that are all but guaranteed to make a splash. If Nintendo aims those releases at the second half of the year, then we could see a surge in demand heading into the Christmas season. Add in a few more games that are rumored to come to the Switch and we could see Nintendo have a really solid first year for the new console. And this news makes me happy. I do think, I agree, if Pokemon Stars is coming, then everything's off the table. I think that Nintendo will have just, a, you know, an even field and that's what they really need. The March release would give people most of the year to pick one up and then a holiday surge could be built around software sales and additional console units as the software library grows. By the holiday season, there'd be a console at a rumored reasonable price point. And we've of course reported on the price point of the Switch. It sounds very, you know, very positive indeed. And that had Mario, Zelda and Pokemon 
ready to go along with some of the Wii U's best titles and possibly even some decent third-party support. All of this sounds just extremely positive, right, you guys? And then they say, as far as sales strategies go, it's certainly not the worst one. But just how feasible is it, though? And then they say a clearer picture come January. We move on through ScreenRed.com, the last couple of paragraphs. If we see a Mario launch title followed by Breath of the Wild and Pokemon Stars later in the year, like rumors suggest, Nintendo will likely enjoy a decent first year with the Switch. No, not a decent first year, an amazing first year, right? Zelda, Pokemon, and Mario. So, yeah, they're kind of underplaying it. I think that that will be one of the best years Nintendo's ever had with the big three, right? Mario, Zelda, Pokemon. If we see some of the rumored third-party games we've heard about, like Final Fantasy VII Remake, then it could be even bigger. And I think that having some sort of a Final Fantasy mainline game could be really big for Nintendo. Yeah, they've never really had that. They've always, you know, done the cool side games and the mini games. But now having the actual Final Fantasy VII Remake, the hype for that game is just too big. I'm so excited to finally play through that game in a new style. But for now, though, we're just playing a waiting game until January with hopes that more about the Switch's first year will be revealed. There's a good chance that when Switch details are revealed in January, they'll focus largely on hardware and what it can do. This may not be a massive stats dump like Microsoft and Sony are prone to do, but will instead focus on what makes the Switch unique. Still, after the reveal, we should have a good idea of what we can, you know, and can do with the hybrid console. Even if the reveal is mostly hardware focused though, we'll almost certainly see some of the launch lineup as well. I agree, you know, we, we're getting this direct in January and I think that their focus has to be games. We know how the console works, they will of course explain things like, you know, what can you do with the Joy-Cons, how does it really work, right? What's the official title for everything and just how many accessories are there? But I think that there has to be a focus on games. They have to show games, they have to show little pieces of you know, reels and also some tiny gameplay when explaining some parts of the games. So I don't think, I think it's a shoe in that we're gonna get to see some games. And I think we need to have a discussion very soon on what might happen in that direct. Then they say, with any luck, the software reveal will contain more than just what's available at launch. If Nintendo's really going for a year long rollout strategy to capitalize on software during the holiday season, the company should preview its launch titles as well as bits and pieces of what we'll get during the first year. Expect the name dropping of a few third-party partners, if not a showcase of some of the third-party titles that will hit Switch too, since that would help the company show that it's overcoming the third-party draught that plagued the Wii U. There's a lot that we don't know about the Switch, but the picture will get a lot clearer after the holidays. If some of the current rumors turn out to be more than just that, then Nintendo might have stumbled onto a winning strategy for them after all. So, yes, I kind of agree with that point. I think that there has been a drought that plagued the Wii U. I think that third parties are something that Nintendo really needs to, you know, cash in on those moments that there is really nothing. The Wii U did have some, you know, some slight moments for them, but it never really got to the point where you're saying, yeah, this exclusive, you know, I think Bayonetta 2 was a good example of that, right? And that game was pretty hyped, and it was actually rated quite well, but it simply, you know, kind of fell through the cracks at some moments. And I think that planning their releases is a very, you know, important thing that they don't necessarily think about that all that much. Or they do think about it, but people are just, you know, not strategizing in the right way, right? Games are just not finished in time, or games are finished too early, and then they, you know, release them too early, Instead, they might have needed it a month or two months later. You know, leading a company like this is extremely hard because a month with nothing can just mean a month that there's nothing for your company, right? And that could, you know, fall pretty hard. And that was, of course, the Wii U's main problem is that there was just not the, that steady stream of new games. And I think that Nintendo, with the Switch, is doing something that is dividing uh, what we think and is, you know, uniting the idea of the console, the home console, and, of course, playing on the go, right, with a handheld, so that they don't have the development time for two different things. That would be very smart. Anyway, I want to thank ScreenRed.com for this cool article. It made me think about a lot of things ahead, not just what's available at launch, but even, you know, further along the line. And if we'll hear about that 
in the next Nintendo Direct. That'd be very exciting to me. Anyway, I'm very curious what you guys think about this news. Are you, you know, thinking about Pokemon Stars at all? What could it mean for Nintendo Switch? And are you guys thinking about the launch lineup? And do you have any ideas what the games at launch will be or should be? You know, if if we are getting a Mario and a Zelda and a Pokemon, that would be totally amazing and Nintendo would have the best launch they've ever had. But do you guys think that those three games will happen? Let me know down here in the comments. I'll read them and, you know, kind of pick some stuff out for the next videos like I always do. Thank you guys so much for watching. This was Block Content. If you want to be a part of this awesome Block Content family, just hit the subscribe button because that subscribe button is made for the click-in. At least it is when it's on our videos, right? <laughs> Thank you guys so much. And we'll see you guys around the corner where there's always more Nintendo Switch news.